Today we're going to go over the new graphic user interface for the ENS series DVRs and MBRs. If you right click anywhere on the screen, you will get the menu pop up. Now in order to make any changes, you first need to log in. So let's go into the main menu. It will ask you for a password or a pattern. In this occasion, we drew a pattern. For us, we just made a simple check mark. Once you are into the menu, you're gonna see the new modular menu design which is very easy to understand and go to any option with just a few clicks. We have video for view, search and playback recorded videos, alarm to view and search live alarm information, configure alarms and events, IVS to manage and view behaviors for detections and settings, POS support for point of sale systems, face detection and backup. Now on the bottom you got two dots. If you click the next dot, that is the next menu. We got display to configure resolution and display settings. And we have the audio to configure audio announcements. On the bottom we got the most important features which is camera management, network, storage, system and account. And info about the DVR or MBR. On the top right hand side you have your live button if you click this you go back into the live screen or you can just simply right click right next to it it tells you who you are you are the administrator right next to it you have your logout reboot and shutdown options right next to it you have your QR codes one is to download the mobile app and the other one is to add the DVR or the MBR to the mobile app. Now let's go back into the live screen by simply clicking on live or right click on anywhere on the screen. In the live screen you can make some adjustments. For example, you right click and you can go to some of the most common menus from the live screen. For example, if you click on search, it will take you to the search menu. It's very easy to do playback and search. Simply select the day that has the dots below the number and on the bottom is your timeline and simply click on that timeline and it will show you the videos that were recorded on that day. Now you can just right click to exit and go back into the main screen. Right click anywhere on the screen to get the menu. If you have a PTC, you can click PTC to control the PTC. Zoom, focus, iris and anything related with the PTZ. You can select view one camera individually or four or if you have more channels it will show you eight or sixteen. Previous screen is when you have a setup of four views and you have sixteen channels you can switch between three or four different screens. Manual record is to record manually, continuously until you stop it. Preview mode is the preview mode of the live screen. If you have set up face detection and you want to show the faces, simply select show face list and it will show the faces on the bottom of the screen. Now you can change the color settings of each camera by simply right clicking and select color settings and you can select the color settings on a schedule base. For example, you could change the saturation, contrast, hue, sharpness, you can default it or you can select from built-in presets that are built in into the DVR. For example, standard, soft, bright, colorful, blank, or customize your own color. This concludes the main menu when you right click on the screen. Now if you make a click on the live screen, you're gonna see a bottom bar. It's almost the same thing as if you right click on the screen, but now you have these three options. This one tells you the network settings, that you can change directly from here. It also tells you your HDD, your hard drive data and information about it. And it tells you your USB manager if you have any USBs connected. Now let's go into the main menu and explain the other features. Let's go to the basic ones. Let's go under camera management on the bottom of the screen. In here, you will find every information about your camera. For example, image is to change the colors and if you have a VLAN, you can select UTP instead of coaxial cable. Now let's click on encode. Encode, this is the resolution that the DVR or the MBR will record and you can change these settings. For the mainstream is the recorded video 
and this substream is the display video when you have more than four cameras in your screen. You can also configure the snapshot, how big you want the snapshot to be safe. Under overlay, you can move the date and the camera name, you can change that to however you would like the positions to be. You can change the name here to anything that you like. Under PTC is where you set up the PTC. Channel type, it's always on auto. It would auto detect the camera video signal input. You can change it to CVI, AHD, analog or other or IP. Coaxial upgrade is to upgrade your coaxial high definition cameras through the DVR. Now let's go back into the main menu. Now let's go into your network menu on the bottom screen. Under the network menu, you can change your IP address under TCP IP. Under connection, you will find your ports and all the information related to access your DVR or MBR. Under Wi-Fi, if the DVR supports Wi-Fi, you can just enable it and you will set up your Wi-Fi through the DVR. Under 3G, 4G, it will do the same thing. If your DVR supports 3G or 4G, you can set up the information here. PPPoE settings, when you do not have a router and you will just have a modem. Under DDNS, you can set up your DDNS options. Under email, you can set up your email servers, hosts, receivers, and senders on this option. You can enable UPnP and set up the ports related to the UPnP options. You can set up your SNMP under the SNMP options, enable it or disable it. You can enable the multicast. This is where you set up your cache register if it's a TCP IP. You can set up the IP address and the port of the cache register. If you have a smart alarm center, you can set up the IP address of the host alarm. And P2P is peer-to-peer -peer, and this is where you find the status of the DVR or MBR if it's online or offline and your QR code for your mobile client or to your DVR or MBR. This concludes a quick overview of the network menu. Let's go back into the main menu. Now let's go into the storage menu. On the storage menu, it will tell you the basic information about your hard drive. Here we have your schedule recording. Right now it's recording all in intelligent mode. You can set up your snapshot when you want to record as well. Under HDD manager, it tells you the information and the status of your hard drive. Under HDD detect, it performs a perform test settings of the hard drive and lets you know if it's good or bad. As you see, everything is good. Under record estimate, we have a built-in calculator. Based on these settings, it will tell you how many days you can record. For example, based on the settings on the top, we can record 10 days on a one terabyte hard drive. If we had a four terabyte hard drive, it will give us 40 days. The other option is known time, meaning if you only know how many days you want to record. Based on the settings here on the top, let's say we want 60 days. It will tell us that we need an estimated of six terabytes. Under FTP, here's when you can set up your FTP and record to your FTP server. This concludes the storage menu. Let's go back into the main menu. Now let's go under the system menu. Under the system menu, you will find the upgrade option on the left that will allow you to upgrade your DVR or MBR unit. On the default option, you can default the DVR or MBR to the default settings. Under IMP or EXP means import and export. Under system maintenance, you can have the DVR or the MBR to auto reboot. Under security, you can enable the password reset. Under access right, you can allow or ban IP addresses in your network. Under general, you can add a holiday, you can change the date and time of the DVR or MBR unit, and you can change the general information about the DVR or MBR. Now let's go back into the main menu. Now let's go under the account. Under the account menu, you can add a username for the Ambiv user for third-party Ambiv cameras. Under group, you can create groups under administrator or under users. And under user, you can create more users to log into the DVR locally or externally. Now let's go back into the main menu. 
Now let's go under the info menu. Under the info menu under BPS, you're gonna find the bit per second per camera consumption. Under channel information, it will tell you which channels are connected and the format. Under HDD, you will see the information of the hard drive or hard drives if you have more than one. Under network, you're gonna see how many users are online on your DVR. You're also gonna see how much bandwidth consumption the DVR is or the MBR is using. And you can also test your network in this menu. Under event, it will tell you what happened to the DVR. Under log, it will tell you everything that happened to the DVR. Under version, you will see all the information related to your DVR or MBR, including the hardware version, the build date, and the serial number. Let's go back into the main menu. And that concludes the bottom menu under management. Now we're gonna go over the main menu items in the menu. Under video, if you click here, you will go on to search for videos. If you click on alarm, you can set up the abnormality alarm for the users for illegal login, for the network when it gets disconnected or IP conflict, and for hard drive when it's mal malfunctioning, or any of the following settings. Under video detect, you can set up an alarm for video diagnostics, for tampering with the camera, for video loss, and for motion detect, along with every other settings that the alarm can follow. Under alarm output, you can connect it to an alarm box in this menu, and right here you can configure your alarm inputs, as well as the alarm box input. Under alarm info, it will show you the alarm type, for example, video loss or network disconnected, Let's go back into the main menu. Now under IVS, you can configure your intelligent settings. For example, in channel one, we can add a tripwire intrusion abandon on missing object rule. And here's when you can draw it. Now we go on to the POS. Under POS, you can search for POS transactions. And under POS setup is where we can set up the POS display along with how it's going to be displayed on the screen. Under face detect, we can set up the parameters for the face detection settings. Under rule, you click on settings and you set up the maximum size of the face and the minimum size of the face. And here you can select which channels. Now under smart search, we can search for human faces. For example, let's select an earlier date, select search and you will find the face. If you click on it, it shows you when it happened. Now let's click under backup and under backup, you can backup video footage on this menu. Now we conclude the main menu options. Let's go into the second page by clicking on the bottom dots. We have display and audio. Let's click on display. And here you can change the display resolution settings for the monitor, your display mode, your live view mode. You can select which camera you want and which order you want. You can select the tour when you select which one would like to view. And you can set up the zero channel. Zero channel will display all cameras in one transmission. Now let's go back. Let's click under audio. Under audio, you can configure your audio announcements on a schedule mode and under file management here's where you can upload your audio files and these are the audio files that will be played and this concludes the quick overview of the menu of the xbr thank you so much for watching don't forget to click that like button share and subscribe for more upcoming videos and visit our website enssecurity.com